a simple circumferential ligature, you'll just wrap your suture around your model vessel once. And you can see I'm chasing down my tag here. I'll show you later in the video how to do a little bit more controlled suture tag management while you're tying. So you want to tie it nice and tight. And you'll throw another one to create a square knot to lock that ligation. And then you'll put another square knot on top to make sure the ligature doesn't slip. And then we're going to cut these tags short. So I'll cut with the skinny side of the OR scissors down, rotate, and snip. Next would be a transfixation ligature. So this might be for a larger vessel or maybe a larger pedicle. And you actually use the needle to split the vessel or the pedicle in half so that it's divided into two smaller bundles of tissue which can be ligated separately. And also, because it takes a bite of tissue there, it can't slip off of this vessel. It's going to be locked in place. You need to make sure your tag's long enough that this will be able to wrap around your pedicle after your first knot. So we'll throw a regular square knot here, two throws. And there's a couple different ways to do transfixations, but we're teaching you to throw a full square knot on this side. And then you'll, you can see how it splits the pedicle into two, or the vessel. And then you come around the vessel to get the rest of it in the back side. And you ligate the second half with at least two square knots. If your suture ever breaks when tightening a knot, you should always re-tighten that throw before your next throw, because the throw can loosen up when the suture breaks. If you look close, you can see how it's got two separate bundles of tissue in the ligature. When ligating a larger pedicle or tissues with greater resistance to compression, a simple circumferential ligature may not have enough inherent friction to resist loosening on the first throw. We'll discuss some ways to increase security of the first throw of a ligature and when to use those safely. Most simply, you can increase friction by starting with a surgeon's throw. To perform a surgeon's throw, the suture is wrapped around the instrument twice rather than once and tightened. And you can see here, it's maintained tension much better than before. Only the first throw is a double wrap, and all subsequent throws are single wraps. As with all ligatures, a second square throw is placed to maintain your ligation. And then your first knot is secured in place with a second square knot. Surgeon's throws are really better suited for closing tissues under tension rather than a ligation. The friction knots covered later in this video provide a much greater ligature security than a surgeon's throw. Another way to increase friction in the first throw is by performing a half hitch or slip knot. This knot is a square knot that tumbles prematurely when the knot is tightened with greater tension applied on one strand over the other rather than evenly applying tension to both strands. This causes the wrapped strand of suture to slide down the opposite strand instead of sliding against each other evenly until the knot tightens. This knot is often created accidentally by new surgeons when making a square knot and pulling unevenly on the strands without realizing it. So it's really important to recognize this because half hitched or slip knots are not secure ligatures on their own. They must have a non-slipped square knot tied over it to lock the ligature in place. If additional slip knots are inadvertently placed instead of square knots, the ligation is prone to slippage and post-operative bleeding. Now we'll move on to friction knots, which provide the most secure ligation when performed correctly. Friction knots wrap around the pedicle twice before knot formation, which dramatically increases the friction between strands and improves ligature security. To perform a Miller's knot, the strand is first wrapped twice over and around the pedicle. Maintaining control of the suture tag with that left hand helps improve efficiency. So now we've created this loop, and you don't have to pay too much attention to where the loop is. It can be moved around, but what you'll do is you'll place your instrument through that loop. So you go through it first, and then you wrap that needle strand of suture around your instrument, and then you grab your suture tag and pull it back through that loop and tighten. You want to maintain tension on that, because most friction knots you have to keep tension on your first and second throw, like there, you want to hold it for at least a little bit so that you can really crush that tissue and make sure you get all the slack out of the suture. So you throw a second knot on top of it, you cut your tag short. All right, so here is a poorly drawn female reproductive tract with the ovary exteriorized and so that vascular pedicle would be up and down if your assistant was holding it up for you to ligate. And so this is what that would look like and what angle you'd be working at during surgery. So here's an example of our millers like that. So we'll pass it around once, grab our tag, around twice, 
kind of grip it a little bit, but it's not super important for this one. You can let that go that loop. And then I'm gonna place my instrument through that loop. Okay, so first we're gonna go through the loop and then we'll get our wrap around that needle side and grab our tag and pull it through. And now because this is an ovarian pedicle model, we have our assistant remove that clamp so that we can place this into the crushed tissue and our assistant replaces the clamp about five to 10 millimeters above the first one. So we'll keep steady tension on it for the first throw and then as well in the second throw. So now this will be making it a square knot on there. So we have one knot and we're gonna place a second knot over top to lock it in place. So there's our first throw, second throw, and now we have another square knot. So now our ligature is nice and secure. Now we'll teach the strangle knot. The strangle knot also has two wraps around the pedicle. In this example, it's wrapped around from the back side and over, and that suture strand is crossed on the finger to make an X. This X should be maintained for the knot. It's pinned with the thumb, and the second wrap comes around again, crosses once more, and all three strands are pinned with the thumb. Next, the instrument is passed through both loops, so under and through both strands and loops there, and then it is pulled back through and tightened in place, which is when the strangle knot is formed. Sometimes it does take a little bit of finagling with strangle and Miller's knots to get all of your strands kind of lined up. You don't want them to make a big X on the back side. You'd like for all the strands to be tidy and parallel. As always, a second square throw locks your first throw, and then you'll place another knot on top to lock your ligature in place. And here's how a strangle would look if you were tying a pedicle where your assistant is lifting the ovary and the pedicle up and out of the body. So you'll wrap around once, across those fingers there to make an X. Again, do just the same. Come under both loops, through, through both circles there, and then you can adjust it while you're waiting, and your assistant will remove that clamp, and you'll place it right in that crushed vasospasming tissue. So you get a nice secure ligature and you'll hold that steady tension just for a moment. And you'll place your second throw and again hold that steady tension so that you can get all the slack out of your knot. For the next two locking throws, it doesn't matter how hard you pull on those, it's not going to tighten your ligature because your first two throws made a knot that locked that tightness in place. The purpose of the second knot is just to keep that first knot from slipping. Time to practice at home. You can literally ligate anything. Here we are doing a Miller's on a stapler and ligating items and ligating objects with different size, thickness, hardness, weight um, can all be really helpful in helping you to familiarize yourself with the knot and be able to perform them in multiple different clinical scenarios and from multiple different angles. Tie things that are canvas or handles to a purse or backpack or this grocery bag, or really anything. So we're demonstrating it. So we're demonstrating a Miller's here, and you can see that it's nice to kind of practice and with a little more room. The loop looks much different than what we shared in the video, but it's still the same knot. So you go through the loop, wrap, and grab that tag and pull it through. And you can see also this quote tissue kind of gives us a little bit of fe different feedback as well than the stapler did. So it's definitely nice to practice on different things, and there's always something around. So here we are doing our strangle on a shoe lace. You always have your shoe on you to practice. So we're crossing, make our X, and then come through both of our loops, pull that tag through, and tie our strangle. All right, we'll get out there and practice. These are really important skills to know how to do. So this is gonna help you to sleep much better at night when you place your ligatures on your spay and neuter surgeries.